In this episode of the way of the CPT, consistently profitable trader, we have Pasquale. He, in my opinion, is one of the prop wizards, a myth and legend in the simulated prop space with over 2.5 million in payouts across different prop firms. He's bagged almost 1 million in payouts in 2023 alone. He's broken records in payouts across several different prop firms. In this episode, he's going to share wisdom that he's acquired from over 15 years as a trader, owning two brokers and his unique approach to taking challenges challenges and getting payouts. If you want to get funded and get picked payouts, you'll love this podcast. I enjoy sitting down and learning from him. Welcome to our first podcast episode. We have Pasquale here from uh, from Germany. I met Pasquale in uh, Miami and I was trying to figure out how to piece together my first 100k payout. So I approached Pasquale in Miami. He was very open and I asked him a question. He said one thing and it sparked just like that light bulb came on. I figured that I would be willing to fly to Germany to have a uh, interview with you, but we are in Dubai. I appreciate you you joining the podcast. I read a book called Market Wizards and uh, Jack Swagger, he interviews the top, you know, uh, traders uh, in the world. Um, I would call you a prop wizard <laughs> right. of the simulated prop space. Prop traders have a lot to learn from you. Um, I have a lot to learn from you, and I'm confident that you have a lot to share. Thanks for joining, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to to come uh, for the first pod. So first off, can you tell me a little bit about your upbringing? So I'm from Germany, Munich, I'm born and raised there. Um, and I started my trading journey in 2008, mm -hmm. um, right after school. So in between the German school system is you, you finish sort of high school, then you go to college. And in between these um, these weeks, I started my trading journey by clicking on an ad uh, for eToro, like by accident. Mm -hmm. But um, you could say that I was always interested in the financial world. Mm -hmm. So even as a 16 year old, 15 year old, I was always looking at how investment banks do stuff, not, not deeply, but just a general interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, when I started, um, I was around 19, 20, mm -hmm. um, clicked on a banner and there was these uh, little guys running on eToro, which uh, um, are the currencies mm -hmm. with the, and um, you could, could basically bet on a one minute frame wh which currency is, is the winner. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's how I started with a game. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. you mentioned, okay, you're 16, right? 15, 16. Why do you think you had like such a, um, why did you gravitate towards the financial markets? I think in the end, money. Money. Yes. Yeah. Um, but also like New York, all you see in, in, in the movies, like mm -hmm. Wall Street. But yeah, in the end, it was money as a 16 year old yeah like, so like what about your parents um your family like what what professions are they what were they like um what did they do yeah general workers okay um in the government so did you have like a drive to make money for any other like personal reasons not not necessarily um so i wasn't like oh i want to be a billionaire or or uh -huh. whatever okay. um but um I think I'm always the kind of guy I, I don't want to work for someone. Mm. So I want to be self-employed. Mm -hmm. I want to own my time, own my life. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's the main driver right from the start. Yeah, I think a lot of traders resonate with trading because of that, yeah. right? Sort of like an entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial spirit. What about college or mm. education wise? Like, um, so um, after school, I, I started college. Mm -hmm. um, went into uh, international management. Okay. And um, while I was in, in college, I traded the whole time. Mm -hmm. And after two semester, like I missed a lot of classes because I basically was trading the whole time. <laughs> even even in in the classes. Even was, in the classes. I was trading. looking at charts. Mm -hmm. um, and I was I was making good money then. And uh, um, that's why I missed classes because I, I didn't put much um, effort to to the studies mm -hmm. because I knew this this is me like this is how I how I can achieve um, what I was looking for the financial freedom yeah. that you were looking for yes so like okay so tell me about so you're 19 you, you when did you take your first trade around 19 around like 19. instantly because okay. um, 
was Itoro, so yeah. I took the the game challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how much did you deposit, like for your I first fifty dollars? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, you went from fifty to zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think all of us do. So yeah. when did you have like your first little success to say, OK, this is it? Well, um, you you have success along the way right from the start because you won't just lose fifty dollars to zero in a second. Yeah. So, yeah, you if the like right from the start, if if you win your first trade and you see, OK, I have now like five dollar more on, mm -hmm. on my balance from 50. Yeah. Um, that's also like a success story in itself. But yeah. Um, back at a time when you don't have much money yeah. because um, yeah, you're young, you yeah. don't work. Yeah. Um, and uh, you s I, I felt like, oh, this, this really works. So I, I can make money with it and it's real. And um, I kept going, um, but um, lost a lot of accounts, but mm -hmm. always like this $50, like what, what you can afford at that time. Yeah. Um, but just to, to gamble around basically yeah yeah so how were you funding your accounts at the time it was personal money personal money yeah you were, were you working or it was like a uh, college um scholarship or anything no no it's just uh, what you get from from your parents from from everybody your family huh. that's that's it okay so tell me about like your first like big money you know mm -hmm. like how, how did you like make maybe like your first 5k 10k it was also the time i tried I, like after a few months, I thought, yeah, I'm not going far with fifty dollars. <laughs> so, I I take a big risk and put up five hundred dollars. Okay. So ten x. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I thought, yeah, I have to do five hundred dollars to a thousand or two thousand or five thousand, and go from there. Mm -hmm. Um, because I I yeah, when you read stuff up um at that point. Um, people were saying you need at least 70k um, to to make a living out of it. Yeah. So I knew I wouldn't I wouldn't achieve that with five hundred dollars. So yeah. I have to build bank. Yeah. And um, started with that was uh, was successful um, to to k. Okay. And uh, luckily, I I withdraw uh, fifty percent of it. So okay. I take I took a thousand dollars out. Okay. Um, just because. It felt good, and I want to take off the risk. So yeah. um, that side of risk management, I think, I always had in me. So I, I risk a lot, but I also take care. I I take something off the Pay table. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. So so what gave you like um, sort of like the courage, right, to go ahead and make the leap? So you start off with fifty dollars. Okay, have some somewhat successes. You say, you know what? I'm gonna deposit five hundred dollars, right? What gave you the courage to do that? At that point, I was trading for at least three to four months, mm -hmm. just um, fed up with this like one dollar trades, two dollar trades, small amounts, because I knew I'm I'm not going far with that. So yeah. I I just take the big risk. Like from from the start, I'm I'm not that conservative mm -hmm. um, when when it comes to to trading. Okay. Yeah. Um, in general, yeah, I can tell that. Yeah. And um, I just, um, I just want to go. So, so like, tell me about like maybe what in your upbringing made you more like, uh, sort of like you're not risk adverse, right? You you take risk. Like, how did that? How did Pasquale develop into that type of person? Mm -hmm. You know. I think I'm not. I'm not an adrenaline junkie. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's not that. But um, I think. I I never got pressured, like from my parents, mm -hmm. that I have to do some some specific job or yeah. or anything. So I always could do what I wanted. Okay. Because I got, uh, yeah, they trusted me. Yeah. That I do, I go the right path. Yeah. Um, and and that's like the freedom mm -hmm. of of that yeah. and no pressure yeah. environment. Yeah. So that's important because I think a lot of traders when they're trying to trade they have this pressure of needing to make money okay mm -hmm. i have to make rent i have to pay my car note i have to pay utilities so they that that those that pressure interrupts their decision making right so you having that freedom from the beginning it, may, it allows you to be more flexible allows you to take risks when you need to 
and you know pay yourself when you need to right so so i think that's 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 pretty good to know how were you learning at this time just looking around the internet back then there was not no big youtuber or whatever or mentorship um mm -hmm. so um it was mostly baby pips yeah but i didn't look much into baby pips because um They were just talking about basic stuff that I figured out myself. Yeah. Like yeah. what is what is spread? What is what is all this stuff? Right. Right. And um, I found Forex Factory, mm -hmm. um, the forum back then, where I think a lot of good traders were um, back then, and uh, just read their analysis, read their charts, and um you you could see different styles of trading mm -hmm. they also dabbled into in the fundamentals that way that's how i found out oh there are news in the markets that actually move the market uh, okay. so okay. um yeah i just i'm always curious um what's what's behind the scenes what what's actually moving um a certain um pair or whatever what i really like about you is you wanted to know what What's going on behind the scenes, right? So you dive into Forex Factory before there's YouTube, before there's uh, before a lot of the education is is, is popular. Um, so what do you think impacted you the most at that time? Like maybe the first five, one to five years, like what belief or um, what system, what person maybe if you were looking at anybody? I never had a role model or anything because um, I was always focused on myself on my own trading because um like nobody is trading for you yeah and um there were no real mentorships out there so it's it wasn't a thing yeah so right, right, at that yeah. phase um you had to do it yourself and you had to do it like the hard way just by 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 doing and um i think um the only drive i had is i made already some money mm -hmm. um and i knew i can do it Mm -hmm. it works yeah and i just kept going really hard so i spent um 16 hours a day almost uh, you could say sometimes more yeah um in the first few years at least three four years mm. um like put put everything into it yeah um and see see that's the thing i think a lot of traders now since there's so much mentorship they want to show up to the class they want to show up to the mentor And the mentor to tell them to press the button, you know, to tell them what to do exactly. So I think, you know, from your experience, what you're showing is that at the end of the day, you have to put the work in. You have to put your 10,000 hours. Right. What was your biggest like amount of money you made before props? Uh, a couple of hundred thousands. Uh, um, but yeah, before props is uh, 12 years. <laughs> yeah, before props is 12 years. Yeah. So, okay, so at what year do you feel like you had a breakthrough, like a real breakthrough? Uh, 2010. 2010. So one and a half year or so into into the journey. Okay. Um, still in college, like mm -hmm. I said, second between second and third semester, I I made some big trades, um, and I went to 70k at mm -hmm. that point. Okay. I think that was the turning point where I really know. Okay, this is my job forever. Yeah, oh, this is it. Yeah, this <laughs> is it. I'm I'm going to to make real money with it, and um, yeah, it took I think two months and. A lot of the 7k was gone again <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah but i knew oh I, i wasn't like oh i lost all or whatever yeah um i was more focused on oh i did it yeah like and i can can do it again yeah doesn't yeah. matter if i if i lose something on the way um it, it never touched me like the winning part yeah so so that you gain confidence from there you learn that You can do it, so you have the confidence to do it again. But um, what I, I continuously kind of hear from you in this interview and another that I listen to is like the sort of detachment, yeah. that detachment from the the outcome. You know, what do you think like helped you gain that like that that detachment? Because um, I, the the pressure part the pressure again, part, like again, I, yeah. I I didn't had to make money. Yeah, I didn't had to manage my money outside of trading. Yeah, because I was in a very safe environment mm -hmm. that I could explore the first one, two, three years mm -hmm. very in an easy easy way. Yeah, and um, I couldn't uh, I can't afford to to lose 70 k mm -hmm. and start from zero. Mm -hmm. So man, that's so important. I feel like beginners they don't give themselves that time to play, yeah. to, to be creative, to explore. So you're saying that you had a safe environment, you had the ability to explore, 
um, it's not sort of like a demo, but it was like real, right? So <laughs> everybody can run the demo up and make a million in the demo yeah. because they're safe. They, they're just playing around. But you had real money in the game, but you still was sort of like building your skills, learning the craft, building sort of like um, an art. It was sort of like an art for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what it seems like, right? Um, so what did you learn from that, losing that 70K that then helped you make 200K or, or, or so after? Um, just um, the pain you have to go through, you you have to to manage your risk in a more conservative way, mm, okay. um, because it's not just um, going your way always. Yeah. Um, like back at the time, I had like eighty percent win rate, mm -hmm. but um, the losing trades were much much larger, <laughs> because um, at the point I I thought I could could beat the market yeah so I'm, I'm always right in my trades yeah and um, that's the the biggest point that I learned back then that um, the market is always right the not market me is always right and yeah. I have to turn it around that I have to think differently yeah and um, from that point I developed a basic risk um, strategy so um, very simple not not like today this all this um, one to X um, return resistance um, because I, I didn't knew that that way right. because I, I did it myself. So I have no terms for that. Yes. Right. So because I'm, I'm not looking at someone who who says, oh, you have to do it that or that or that way. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking, OK, I have to 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 do it differently yeah. than before. Yeah. And then I reduced risk. I, I looked for better entries, mm -hmm. looked for for clear trades um, that I'm confident in. So, so how did you like track your growth? Like were you using any softwares like MyFX book or just pen and paper or how were you sort of looking at what you did, reflecting and then making improvements? Like how did you do that? Basically only by pay uh, payouts in, in prop firm terms yeah but uh, mm -hmm. like how much you make in a month and how much you take out of the of your personal account mm -hmm. but i also use my fx book um to to track things but not to to analyze my my data because uh -huh. in the end um i always looked at that okay i make this amount of money in a month i take maybe 10 or 15 percent out to just pay me mm -hmm. and the rest is is just building a bank and that's that's all so why did you start with props like what inspires you to it was the time between 2018 and 2020 i found out about ftmo through a youtube video in 2020 and i thought hmm, um cool system like uh, i put down a thousand dollars and and get a hundred thousand or whatever amount uh, to trade with and i get 80 percent of the profit Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. So, so when you started, do you, did you ever imagine that you make this amount of money? Like, how how much have you totaled in payouts? Around uh, more than than two million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like closer to three million now. Or yeah, so. no, uh, it's more two point five. Okay, about yeah, two point five. Yeah, and that's a lot, man. Yeah. So, did you ever imagine that you you get to that point? Mm, no, but I'm I'm not the dreamer guy mm. so i just take it what what's what's there so okay i have no goals oh i make a million this year or yeah. whatever it's just you you can plan that kind of stuff yeah like at what point did you realize like hey i can make a lot of money from this when when i saw ftmo when you saw ftmo yeah was it like the first payout no like the the system because oh, the system itself yeah because okay. i was trading for 12 years at the point yeah and i know what I can do mm -hmm. with my trading and um, how my 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 earnings are when I have a hundred K or a million. So I, I knew how much I can make with a hundred K that I only have to risk a thousand dollars. So um, I could imagine what what what's out there for me. Yeah. But then I saw the rule set and um, thought, yeah, makes sense. And they put it that way that traders can learn that way and I see it yeah because a lot of pr traders don't trade with stop loss yeah so I think the the daily drawdown is a good good uh, um, training course for for adding stop losses um, but yeah the the 
because of the rule set, I had to change my own trading because I was trading my personal account differently mm -hmm. than I would trade prop firms. Yep. So um, my system that I traded there was isn't really working with with prop firms because of the daily drawdown. Yeah, it seems like your experience that 12 years, you sort of saw an opportunity, but it's your the way that you see props is, a, is different than the, the new trader that's coming in. I'm, I think there's a lot of new traders coming mm -hmm. in and trying props, right? So you have a very creative way of, of looking at props. Like your approach is very creative. Um, and you really helped me out. You really kind of helped free me from the matrix. <laughs> uh, but um, so one prop firm, they posted your stats. OK. And I think you purchased maybe about 40 challenges. And I think maybe 12 of them made it to uh, fund it. And I think maybe about five payouts that totaled over 500K. OK, so you see there's like a there's a theme here. Can you explain like your approach? What was going on there? Like how you were seeing things there? Sure. I take props or, or prop accounts as a monthly time span. So I see it as a 30 day trading career mm. um, because how props are built, I don't fully trust the system as it is right now um, because it's very risky for the, for the firm itself. And um, as it turns out, I'm, I'm kind of right. When we look at funding talent, MFF situation, yep. anything can happen to the to the space. Um, so and also how they are built from the rule set and, and what they give you. Um, you. You can make a lot of money if, if you do it um, in a very aggressive way. But um, I'm not. I didn't. I didn't see the 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 long play here. So I didn't see how I compound a, a account over a year. Mm -hmm. So I see it as a thirty day trading plan, mm -hmm. and um, I sign up to challenges, try to get over with it in in the fastest time because mm -hmm. I don't want to to put a lot of time into challenges like one, two, three months trading as a challenge without paying isn't really like. I made money before. It's not like I, I had to, to go to props to make money. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to go to the funded, uh, funded um, stage uh, as fast as I can. Yeah. And in the funding stage, I, I treat it as a personal account, mm -hmm. but also with the risk that I see, OK, I only want to do it for one month and the next month could be a start from zero. So, okay. um, so, so, all right, there's an analogy here. I see like, uh, like when making a baby, <laughs> so like there's like millions of seeds that, that go, and then there's like 200 seeds that, that reach the egg and then only one makes it, you yeah. know, but that one turns into a human, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's sort of an analogy though. Okay. So you have these accounts and then they, a certain batch of them make it to a certain stage and then you make it to funded stage and then you treat that one more like a, like a personal account where, yes. where you trade it right, uh, well, right? So I have some questions about that, right? So I think in May this year, there was like, you made about 500K in May alone in four different firms. How are you thinking about trading multiple firms? You know, like, do you trade them all at once? Do you trade one firm, pass it, bring it to funded stage and then another firm pass it, bring it to funded stage. Like Yeah, I sign up to, to any firm that um, I think is good enough um, from the rule set, from, from the firm itself. Are they here next month? Um, will they pay me yeah. in the end? <laughs> important. Like, yeah, very important. And uh, if if all tick, all boxes are checked, um, I sign up and, and try to get um, funded. Then it, it's different from, from firm to firm because they don't have, have the same rule set. I would trade the same way um, on all accounts, but I don't use trade copiers or, or anything like that. Everything is manual. Um, put up the, the trades myself, but I have different account sizes, so I have to manage my trades differently. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, it's, it's the same trading for, for all firms. Yeah. So, OK, so like in May, I'm just using this as an example. So one week I saw 250K with the funded trader. I mean, <laughs> from gold, <laughs> saw the stats. But then maybe how did you so did you trade that one and then leave it to the side and then trade others like other weeks in the month? Like No, all but it's all the same time, all the same time. Mm. OK, so different account sizes, different risk. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. And then when you're going through challenges all at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Because it takes some time to get through the challenges. So you just sort of like load them up. Yeah. When load them up. I have no specific time frame or, or days that I want to trade challenges. I just, if I see a challenge that I want to take, I take it. Okay. And uh, as soon as I get the funded account, I find entries. Okay. So no, no specific time for yeah. anything like that. Okay. Okay. And then, so I have a concept of like a setups, like a plus setups. These are setups that, you know, maybe fundamentals are aligning, technicals are aligning. Um, and those are the, the setups that I take. So do you take those for your challenges or do you just sort of like maybe take like a B or less quality during the challenge just so that you can get through the challenge? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, okay. So on the challenge, I'm I'm more like, OK, get it over with quick. Yeah. And and if it fails, OK, I start another challenge. OK. Or okay. sometimes I, I buy multiple challenges and so I don't have to wait. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, it's the opportunity cost. Yes. If you're waiting, like you said, you already made money. If yeah. you're waiting six months, I mean, not six months, but three months to pass to get to the funded stage, you've wasted three months of time. Yeah. Okay. So you see these things as sort of like a ratio. Like yeah, definitely. Maybe, you know, return on investment, you invest a certain amount, you invest one and you have to make five or, or six or so. Yeah. So currently in, in this year, I think, um, I have a one to nine ratio. Mm. So for each dollar I spend in challenges, I get nine dollar payouts. Okay. And as long as this ratio doesn't change drastically, I think I'm I'm on a good path. And that's what it matters in the end. Like yeah. how much you get paid in the end. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter if if I blow fifty or hundred or two hundred challenges. As yeah. long as as the payout is is okay, yeah. um, I'm fine with it because I'm not here to win a prize. Um, I'm here to make money in the end. Yeah. And um, but it's it's a hard um, um, direction to go because for a new trader, I think it's almost it's it's not doable um, because um, you need a certain bank mm -hmm. um, to do that. Yeah. So I had that from from my past trading. Yeah. Um, so I could I could risk more from from the get go. Yeah. So maybe in a year or two, there are more people like that because they built the bank themselves over yeah. the, this years. Maybe what would be your advice for the new trader? Like um, how should they approach the challenge? Like, what, what would you advise them? Depends on, on where they are on the trading journey. Like total beginners, I think, shouldn't trade with pop. But um, for for the people that have that are profitable profitable in in their in their personal accounts and and they actually know what's what's going on and they know the risk of of props they know how how to deal with daily drawdowns and and all that stuff um, I think um, depends on how much you can invest mm -hmm. but um, I, for example I I will always go for the, for the biggest account uh, size. Um, but you have to find your, your account size that, that fits your trading and mm -hmm. fits your, 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 your own situation. Yeah. And, um, then I, I would take it very slow in the beginning, um, to, to just make it and make the first payout. Yeah. And after the first payout depends on, on how large it is, you can scale into other things yeah. like other firms, other accounts, you can take more risk. But I would I would gradually scale it up, um, but always have a certain bank behind like in mind mm -hmm. um, that I I um, I do it myself. Like I have a bank built up over over years, over years, and um, I I invest the bank into props, but only to a certain point. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't just like, when I started with props. I, I wouldn't just go out and buy challenge for for 200k. So I, I started with FTMO, um, got the payout there, and then I started with funding talent, all the stuff, and and that's how I grew the bank even more, and then I scaled even more yeah. um, until I traded with five, six, seven firms, um, and um, uh, like traded. Even though I had the funding um, funded account, I traded challenges on the side because I knew with my risk I would blow the account. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a given at yeah. the point. Nobody is is trading a hundred percent correctly, and um, so I I took a lot of risk, but the payout 
um, is also yeah, there. The, the, the ratio. So yeah. maybe you spend about 100K on challenges this year, maybe to make a, a million. Yeah. So <laughs> the ROI is great like, yeah. from a business perspective. Yeah. One thing I really admire about you is that you have a, a sort of like unique trading style in this space. Like there are certain trading systems and like tribes that dominate the prop space, like when it comes to marketing, right? So when I learned about your style, I, I appreciated it because um, it gives like voice to uh, the fact that there are different styles, different systems, and, and people can find edge in different you know types of trading styles, right? So can you can you share like your trading style, uh, the one that fits you the best, and one that you find um, to be sure. successful? Yeah, sure. I. Um did a lot of things in 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 my journey. I, I tried a lot of strategies, everything, um, all all you can imagine, like EAs, different different setups, complex setups. The the screen is flashing, whatever. Like yeah, I tried it over the years. Yeah. Um, but what I found out is um, that um, what matters the most in finding a strategy is one that um that fits you like mm -hmm. as a person yeah like are you more um structured then go with the strategy that's that's purely like technical like very very strict on that side yeah. um are you more flexible like myself um I, I wouldn't last long in in this environment like where i have a very structured um trading approach yeah. so i want to like that fits me the most i i want to to see what's going on in the market like price action mm -hmm. like a very fluent strategy that's that changing and um so you have to 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 see uh, to find your your fit in the system yeah. and um, then you you search your strategy in the end um look it up but i i want to keep it simple yeah. Um, and then you you just have to go with it and and stick with it because trading um, if you learn trading it it takes years and to to even understand your strategy would take month or yeah. or a year and what I see now is a lot of people are trying ICT or whatever um, because they they hear it's good they mm. see people using it yeah. um, and they think okay this must be it and then they sign up trade it for one or two days and say oh i didn't make a lot of money with it so right. scrap it and go to the next right. and that's the the complete wrong approach to it so you it needs time and right. the strategy itself isn't isn't um, a big part of trading so trading is is very difficult and if if there would be this one strategy that dominates all everybody would use it by now because yeah, it definitely. would be known yeah and um for myself I find um, because I'm I'm a very flexible person. Mm -hmm. um, I I like to to use fundamentals as well. Yeah. Because I think fundamentals move the market in the end. Yeah. And um, for my style, they are very important because when I saw okay, um, nothing works for me that I looked up. Um, so I I kept the trading very simple. Mm -hmm. um, very simple technical stuff like support resistance zones a few uh, moving average and that's it mm -hmm. like just to give me a general um edge where i want to open positions and close positions and then i over the years i learned how how market moves like how fundamentals are built like the connect the dots yeah. um from from a easy layer one from interest rates to economic data on on the bottom yeah. um but it it takes years and years and i just kept looking at economists cnbc bloomberg what they think about it mm -hmm. and and then i i built my own mind around that right right it's the personalization yeah i think a lot of traders they miss that pack that fact right you can have the greatest mentor in the world he can give you a system, he can give you an edge, but you still have to personalize it. It has to fit you. And then you need time to bond with it and make a relationship with it in order to utilize it, right? Um, so one thing about fundamentals, a lot of people, so Mark Douglas, the famous Mark Douglas, uh, he made a statement in one of his uh, seminars um, and it was about news releases, right? So he was like, um, it's just shit that people make up. So a lot of people, 
they misunderstand what he's saying, right? So the market may go in a certain direction and then MSNBC comes out and says, this is why the market did it afterwards, right? So he's talking about that, not necessarily macroeconomics that are that um, are, are reasons why central banks make decisions, right? Or why the value of gold goes up, et cetera, right? So I think a lot of people kind of misunderstand what you mean by fundamentals or what people mean when they when they talk about fundamentals, right? So can you just kind of give us an example? Like if you trade gold, XAU, USD, right? Cross, right? So you have gold, fundamentals, and then you have US the US economy, right? Can you kind of explain like what's something that you would look at when you're trading gold in order to make a decision? Of course. Um, so for me, the, the most important part to look at is is the, the rate market. Mm -hmm. um, so where treasury yields are, um, because um, you have to, to see where money flows. Like yeah. is money coming into the US or the US dollar or mm -hmm. it's going out to a different country, um, mm -hmm. currency. Mm -hmm. So and that's the USD fundamentals. And if you look at gold, gold is a more safe haven. So is there more fear in the market mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. And then you look at risk assets and you determine, oh, um, like stocks are going up. Um, what what is the implication for gold? Mm -hmm. And for for USD, um, the gold part is is easier, but the USD part is is more difficult. Really? Yeah, because there are more layers to it. Mm. Um, and and as I said, the the most important is is rate decisions, mm -hmm. um, because. Um, the Fed in itself, they decide if they break a com uh, the the economy or if they run it hot. Right, like right. they they decided. Yeah, nothing else. Right, and um, and um, the the flow of money is also very easy on on that layer, and you can see it all the time. Like um, um, Japan has almost zero interest rates, and the US US has more than five. So of course. Japan investors will invest in in U.S. companies or U.S. firms or stocks or whatever, but they have to transfer um, yen to to U.S. dollar. So mm -hmm. that's the money flow. Yeah. And Japan is for for the last twenty years a big funding um, currency. You could say for the U.S. dollar, euro was it for for the for the last um, ten years. So that's how how big money flows, mm -hmm. and that's how over the long term it's not a trade that you take as a retail trader. Right. But it's 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 giving you the um, the long term view of a currency, and the more you go into depth on that, um, you can you can use it for your weekly analysis mm -hmm. as I do it. Yeah. So I look, um, what's up this week? Is there some news event that I want, don't want to um, evade? Yeah. And um, like for me, it's first step, the biggest one, as I said, is rate decisions. The second one is um, inflation data because it's driven by, by that. Yeah. Um, the CPI. Yeah. And after that, it's the employment stats, mm -hmm. because yeah. that shows you how how healthy uh, economy is. Yeah. And third is all the rest, um, like GDP. Yeah. But it's not that important. It's just one big package, you yeah. connect the dots. And I don't really trade a news event by itself. Yeah. But I want to see which how much is priced in what would be an unexpected event. Mm -hmm. like a shock to the market right and um how big is the risk for it that right. the shock actually happens because you're looking for imbalance you're yes. looking for this this event to create imbalance in one direction or the other yeah so i have a question about this because i trade us 30 so i'm i'm, I'm locked in on rates i'm looking at inflation i'm looking at if the economy is running hot or cooling disinflation inflation right etc right but for me gold is a little bit more mystical because it's global like it's not only U.S. investing in gold. How do you manage the fundamentals for gold? Like, how do you know? So, for example, when we see the Ukraine Russia war, when we see uh, Israel Hamas, we see gold spike because, as you said, um, uh, there, if there's fear, then gold is a safe haven. But other than like war, what else are you looking at to see to, to sort of see if, if gold is going to go bullish? Um, I'm I'm not deeply looking into that. Okay. But um, usually the, you, you, you look at, at the stock markets. Like um, when, when Asia opens, oh, are they bullish mm -hmm. or are they bearish okay. from an from, uh, um, economic point, like stock markets? Mm -hmm. um, so is there risk on or risk off in Asia session? But it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that the Europeans after that 
couldn't turn that around. Right. So it's it's difficult to look at at gold fundamentals um, on a day to day basis. It's more like, as you mentioned, um, war is a blueprint. We saw it. What what um, how it played out uh, last year yeah. in Ukraine Russia. So uh, it wasn't sort of easy trade this year. Mm -hmm. Because usually it, it spikes up the first days and then it cools down when, when there's no evidence of the US coming in or anything like that. So yeah. we have to see how it, how it plays out right now. Gold itself is, is more, I don't look at fundamentals in gold. It's just, is there extreme fear or not? Ah, uh, okay. To me. Okay. And then the other imbalance is the US economy. Yeah. You're looking at the US economy. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So another thing that I think kind of um, gives people pause when it comes to fundamentals is that they think that fundamental analysis should be 100 percent, right? It's like, OK, we think that it's going to buy because there is fear and then it doesn't happen. Oh, I'm not looking at fundamentals again. Right. So do you see like do you, do you have the same like probabilistic uh, perspective as you do with like technical analysis, like when it comes to fundamentals? Yeah. Definitely. A few weeks ago on, on the Fed meeting, the last Fed meeting, there, there was the imbalance you, you talked about, um, that um, the, the market price in um, rate cuts next year mm -hmm. early and they pricing in the, the whole um, year and the Fed and Jay Powell kept pushed it out yeah. on, on every meeting and yeah. it has to and, and had to be repriced on every meeting after that. Yeah. So it's sort of an easy trade right now. Um, if you see oh the the market and the sentiment and what you see and read around that, um, they think um, that rate cuts are coming very soon and the Fed is pausing very soon. So that was an easy trade. Overall, the fundamentals around you see on a weekly basis, I don't I don't trade off of that. Mm -hmm. It's more to to secure me from from bad positions. Right. Yeah. So if I think. Um, 80% the, the US dollar should be rising this week because of very small details or big details that's not in the price. I'm not sure about it. It's yeah, just, it's, yeah. it's a small point in, in the whole strategy. Yeah. But I think it gives me this few percentage of more win rate mm -hmm. um, that matters in the end. Yes, right, right. So are you like trend trader or more of like a trade the range? I like trading ranges. Okay. I'm, I'm not a trend trader guy. I see trends. I have a strategy also for that, but I'm, I'm not good at it mm -hmm. because it, it's not, my mind is not built for it mm -hmm. because yeah. I, I want to search like instantly when I, when I see a, um, a chart, I search for counter trend points. Uh -huh. Yeah, you turning want to fade the yes okay okay that's why it's it's hard for me to jump on a on a trend trade because i think like deep in my mind it's going down right. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but the, so it seems like the fundamentals help you though because you, okay if, if price is ranging you know that fundamentally there's nothing to form to cause an imbalance so you may stay between these like maybe fundamental support and resistance so after you know that how do you use technicals like to, to to enter? So I only trade on on one hour and four hour chart. Okay. I use four hour more for for a broader view analysis mm -hmm. over weeks to see if I miss something in the one hour, and uh, after that it's very basic support and resistance zones only on the one hour. Mm -hmm. um, um, Fifty MA. 100 MA and 200 MA. These are my often my my exit and entry points and um, trend lines. Okay, and that's it. So yeah. very very basic. Yeah. If if I see a structure in the in the price that I want to to take a trade, for example, um, the price touches the the 100 MA, um, it reacts to it. So I want to see a reaction. I want to see a denial, whatever. Then I I take the trade mm -hmm. because. Um, it's and then the supports are on the next cluster above or below um and that's how i define my my risk yeah because i don't set a, a certain risk or oh, 30 pips stop loss or whatever it, it has to make sense in the end yeah. and uh, for targets the same so that's why i don't always aim for one to two one to three um it's good to have but um in the end i i don't control the price so right. i want to see how the price moves and reacts to my next targets my next 
resistance or support zones and then i decide oh do i want to keep the trade or do i cut it out yeah i've changed in that manner too i used to always just hold to a certain zone but i, I, I see how price reacts as it's going because as you as you know it can it can it can turn around at any time so uh another question we talked about like what you would recommend for a beginner so we're going to talk just kind of transition back to like your your wisdom like the wisdom that you can impart for for the listening audience right so we have like three different traders we have a trader that may be um they just started just new we have a traders that have been making some money but they're trying to go from good to great right um and then we have a traders that they're making great money and now they want to transition to something else right so for the the trader that wants to go from good to great what would be your advice for that person so this trader already has a strategy um, he knows how to trade. He knows the the things around trading, but maybe or most certainly um, keeps bad tendencies. Mm. And for me, a strategy itself is only ten or twenty percent of of a trader. Like eighty percent comes from from the mental game, mm. um, psychology. Yeah. And I think that that's how most traders are failing yeah. because. Um, at the start, we have all we every everybody has 50 50 chance um, and the the trading system give you that little edge to to shift the 50 50 in to your side. And mm -hmm. then the mental game comes in and it shifts heavily against you because yeah. people are getting emotional, mm -hmm. um, taking bad trades, over trade um revenge trade if they lose a trade they they don't manage their losses mm -hmm. um so i think that's where almost all traders are failing mm -hmm. especially the ones that are already in the spot that have the they systems have down the system. yeah. um should should focus on that mental and game your mental game because yeah. That's that's it. That's the key point to get yeah. to get and, to profitable. You help me as well. It's like, okay, how do I get to this hundred K? Mm -hmm. It was a mental thing. It's a mental thing. I have a wife and kids. So you're like, okay, Abdullah, you gave me this advice. It's all mental at this point. I have strategy, I have consistency. So I need to unlock this little piece of limitation in my own mind now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then last one is this trader who's already they're doing great. Like what's Pasquale's long game? Like what's what's what what are you doing? Like or what are you coming out with next? Like you've already made you know two point five million in mm. payouts from trading itself. What what do you have coming out? Or are you know what kind of um, things uh, would you recommend a trader be looking into getting into? Like maybe in the industry, but uh, different parts um, depends on on what you like. Mm -hmm. um, you can keep trading, but it gets bored at a certain um, time. Um, also, you, you could then risk more, whatever, and that's bad. So um, I think uh, a good thing is to balance it out um, more, more personal life or more out of the trading life. OK, um, um, besides trading, then you can look and if you want to stay on the working side, you, you can look at different types of trading. Mm -hmm. like I only trade Forex, so I'm also interested in equities, but I didn't touch it yet. OK, it's yeah. a new thing to learn. Yeah. Um, or you can can try to to build a real track record mm -hmm. and um, attract capital from from the outside. Yeah, it's very hard. It's super hard, um, but um, and it takes a long, long time. It's not done in six months or a year. You need to audit it. Your once your yes. your results have to be audited by like a professional yes. firm because yeah. uh, what what comes from from investors is at one uh, point one and the most important one. Are they losing money? That's yeah. the first question. Yeah, not, it's real money. Not, this is not, not simulated money. Do they do they make a hundred hundred percent out of it? Like, how much can I lose with your system? Yeah, that's that's the yeah. first and most important point, because a lot of young traders think, okay, if they post a hundred percent win rate and then they attract investor money with it. No, that's that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Investors don't care about the money that they make in the end. Of course, it's a part of it, but. The, the losing part is is the first one because they know and especially in, in forex um traders are losing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so okay so um we're just gonna start to wrap up here um so how can how can people find you like uh social media like um you're on twitter i know you're on twitter um where do you prefer people kind of find you at it's both instagram or twitter mm -hmm. it's fine um i'm not that active on social media because i i 
I want to avoid it to to focus more on, on the business side yeah. because uh, it's it's so much noise um, and unnecessary noise. But um, from time to time, I'm there. People can find me. I post stuff um, or reach out to me, and also have a, a small Discord community where I answer questions. I have the the links on on my social media pages, um, and there I get more in depth of of my analysis people can follow my analysis i post mm -hmm. it weekly um so if uh, people want to learn about fundamentals um i have no like guidance but i can show what i'm looking at and yeah. they can start looking at it too yeah. and and maybe find their own or connect their own dots in the end after some time yeah okay that makes sense and um anything else you want to mention to the to the to the audience anything else you have going on um yeah i have something going on uh, in the near future um because the prop business is right now in a i think very bad space or very bad um um sense right now because a lot of people don't trust the firms and um, I have some ideas since I first saw FTMO because I was in, in the brokerage business. So um, it makes sense to me what they are doing. But I, I thought, yeah, there, there are ways to do it better mm. or, or differently, not necessarily better. But um, and um, it's always like if I do something, I, it has to to have certain value for for people yeah um so um there will be will be something coming maybe in mid-november that um, people can can look at it um i think it's very interesting it gives a different path in in this business not just for the usual prop trader but mm -hmm. also for good traders that are out there and avoid prop firms right now because it's it's uncertainty don't know who to trust because uncertain waters right now in prop business um, is is um, what takes people that drive the the business through a better place. Mm -hmm. So who do we trust to to navigate these? Yeah. Um, that's that's I think the biggest question traders have right now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, let's see let's see where the next month will take us. Okay. All right. Then one last question for you: If we could go forward 10 years from now okay what would that pasquale say to the current pasquale hopefully um every everything uh, i did right now was was the right path um the right right steps taken okay all That's, right man thank you so much <laughs> i really appreciate you man thanks for joining thanks thanks for having me it was all a right. pleasure yes sir thanks